Welcome to the Apparel Entrepreneurship Podcast. We are your hosts, Anna and Klaus Christensen, founders of Apparel Entrepreneurship, your go-to source for running and growing a successful, meaningful apparel brand. Each episode will give you hands-on tactics and practical strategies about everything apparel entrepreneurship. You'll also hear inspiring conversation with apparel industry experts and entrepreneurs about their tips and journeys in this fast-paced industry. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Apparel Entrepreneurship Podcast. This is episode number 34. And today you have to bring out pen and paper because it'll be packed. This episode is going to be packed with actionable tips for you about the topic. What's the topic, Klaus? Let's call it planning a productive 2020. So it's going to be about planning next year. We're going to look into three different levels, if you want to say. First, we're going to talk about how you can plan your year. Then we'll look into weekly planning. And then we'll go down and look at how you can look at daily planning and what you can do there. By the way, we're Anna and Klaus Christensen. And we get so many questions about planning and time management. Not everybody is a planner uh, and not everybody as is good with numbers and uh, calendars and all that. Most creatives, they just like doing creative stuff. So this is not up their lane. And that's why we said, okay, it's time, especially now with 2020 coming up, we have to do this, this episode. Because with the content that we're going to have today, you'll be able to structure. We suggest you give yourself maybe a good thing would be about two hours that you set for yourself after listening to this episode with pen and paper, no distractions, no interruptions with a good cup of tea or coffee and just sit down with your calendar and work through everything that you need to do for next year. So let's dive in. First, we're going to talk about things that you can do through the year. Apparel entrepreneurship is such a valuable asset to any clothing brand. Anne and Klaus both have a wealth of experience from setting up their own brands, which means that the advice based on these experiences is realistic and actionable. The membership program provides useful resources to help brands learn about the elements required for running a clothing line, and the tools and templates offered here are extremely valuable as they are hard to find elsewhere. Charlie Pollard, United States. What Apparel Entrepreneurship has created with a membership is long overdue in this industry. The experience and the content you create out of it is a very high value, not only for new startups, but also for existing brands to better understand the full picture. It provides a nice guidance and source of help for those who do not have the relevant network yet to get proper information from. Simone Meyer, Germany. Do you work really hard on your apparel brand? You listen to all the fashion experts and do all the tricks and strategies, but are just not seeing the results that you want. Or are you lost as where to start? Does it seem overwhelming with a lot to learn and are you yearning for your community of people who understand your vision of running an apparel brand? Hi, I'm Anna, and if you answered yes to any of those questions, I want you to seriously consider the Apparel Entrepreneurship Membership Program. You will be joining the hundreds of entrepreneurs who have discovered their unique brand niche and have clarity and a plan to succeed with their brand. This is an experience and an opportunity for you to really take your brand to the next level, to implement our unique six-step success path that will result in purposeful designs, orders, sales, exposure, and most importantly, profitability. Let us change your life, or at least let us change your apparel brand for the better. Go to apparelentrepreneurship.com slash join to join the membership program now. We look forward to seeing you on the inside apparelentrepreneurship.com slash join. First of all, bring out a calendar. If you don't have one, you can always go into, for example, Google Calendar and just print them out, or you have another one. And the first thing we want you to do is to think about your non-negotiable happenings during the next year. These can be your holidays, special days, weddings, birthdays, etc., and also your vacation time. 
This is where you think about yourself and not your business. This is where you put everything that has to do with yourself and your family first. Because as an entrepreneur, we want you to run your business to suit your life and not the other way around. We do not want you to be super busy, busy running a business and you don't have time to enjoy life. You don't have time to spend time with your family and your friends and all the good stuff and the the happy things that happen in life. We want want you to prioritize those first. Of course, you need to show up at your cousin's wedding, right? There's things to do all the time. And also, depending <laughs> on your background and culture, there are special days throughout the year that you need to plan for. Yeah. So this is about you. You put everything down on the calendar that has to do with you. Put in a vacation. It doesn't need to be like two months, but maybe a week somewhere could be a great thing. This thing about looking at yourself first, it's about looking at it at the long term. You need to live while you're building a business and not just burn yourself out before you reach your goals. So while you're building, building your business, your every day, your every week, every year, you have to live as well. And then we're going to talk about stuff that comes with your business. Are there any events that you want to attend? Do you have any launches? Will you be attending any trade shows or do you have specific sales periods? Of course, this industry, the most typical is two seasons, but then, I don't know, maybe you're, uh, maybe you run on four season model or maybe you have weekly drops. This is completely dependent on the type of business that you're running. So you have to look at your your big goals first. When are the deliveries? When is your launch date of the new collections of maybe you have special seasons? When are you launching those? Put those into the calendar. And when you know your deliveries and your launches, you will reverse engineer month for month and week for week backwards. You know how much time you should spend on marketing before that and what you need to do before you get your orders and before the sales periods, what you need to prepare. So you do that by reverse engineering. And we can mention if you're a member, we have it in our membership. We have a detailed schedule for clothing brands so they can plan their year more precisely exactly how long every step in the product development process takes. And this is completely customized to your business. You just enter whenever you want to do certain things, whenever you want to to have everything delivered, and then it kind of, you you know the entire process and what, what you need to do when you need to do it. And then let's talk about the stuff that you need to put in when it comes to weeks. So today we'll give you two of our favorite ways of how to plan your weeks. There are several ways, but our first favorite one is what we'll call time blocking. So this means that you, for every week you create blocks. This could be, for example, Monday morning, collection planning, Monday afternoon, customer relations, Tuesday morning, online marketing, and so on. And, and then you also can create a space for when you should look at and read and send emails, and you can have a certain block for when you handle finances. And maybe you will have a daily slot where you interact with suppliers and check things and double check, communicate, and make sure everything is on track and handle issues that are coming up that you haven't foreseen. And when you create these blocks for the week, it's also important that you create buffer blocks. So you have some slack if unplanned events happen. Otherwise, if if your plan is just stuffed with exact blocks for the entire week, it's quite likely that things will take, some tasks will take more time than you have planned for. And then when the week ends, you just feel unaccomplished that, that you haven't managed to do everything you wanted to do and you feel behind. So put in some buffer time in those blocks. By doing this, the positive thing about time blocking is that you know that all parts in your business will get some attention since you have planned for it. It's not that you spend the entire week on collection planning and then you have done nothing on marketing. And also by having blocks, it puts a bit more pressure on what you actually should work on. You know that you have only blocked out two hours for this thing to do. So after two hours, you need to start working on the next thing in order to move forward. You don't have to think about the other things while you're doing it. You know it's planned for. Okay, now again, I'm working, working on the collection. I don't think have to think about marketing or checking my emails. I have actually planned for that later. 
So this way you will only focus on one thing at a time. And if you haven't read it, there's a great book by Gary Keller called The One Thing. Go and read it if you haven't done that, that's a recommendation. You want to avoid multitasking or it's more about task switching. You know, studies show that humans are not great at multitasking. We, en we just end up doing mediocre things. And every time you switch between tasks, because you cannot really focus on two tasks at once, of course you can, you know, walk and talk at the same time, but if you want to do serious tasking in business, you cannot do two things at the same time. So you will just switch and then it will take time to refocus and get back in the flow every time you do this. So again, you can focus better. You don't have to check your email all the time. You have a time slot for that, maybe three between three and four in the afternoon. And when you do these time slots, we also strongly recommend that you schedule exercise time for yourself. The, the human body is not created to sit and stand still an entire day. And if you only do that, it will be a downward spiral. So schedule some time. Maybe your thing is to walk. It can be go for a run or a bike ride or maybe just do some exercise on the spot at the desk. Some factories that I've been visiting, they actually have exercise for their workers. It's at a specific time during the day. All of a sudden, they turn the music on and all the sewing workers, they stand up and then they exercise. I mean, how fantastic is that? Yeah, that's great. And it also studies show that the human brain can only focus, sharp focus, like 100% focus in 50 minute slots. So you can even try this yourself. You can put a timer for 15 minutes where you super focus on a task and then 10 minutes or even, I don't know, a couple of minutes, two, three minutes, you do something else. You stand up, you walk around, you go grab some water, you go grab some fruit, you do some lunges or you, you know, some whatever small things, exercises, things that you stretch a little bit and then you go back on a 15 minute slot. This will help you stay focused and your productivity will shot through the roof. So this is just as when we talk about planning your year. You have to put yourself first. If you're in this for the long run, prioritize yourself. And it's not just about your health. It also goes when you're too overwhelmed what you should do and focus on. And when people come and maybe ask you for things and your attention, here you have to learn to say no to things. You, and you know, you can actually turn off the phone and the email once in a while and just focus on one thing. And when people come to you and ask you for things, maybe you're a person that easily just tends to say, well, I can do this. You can actually say, well, I will check my calendar and my other commitments and then you can just get back to them. And it's an, it's an okay answer to say, well, to honor my previous commitments, I, I can't take on this right now. I have to focus on this thing. And every time you say yes to something, remember that you're saying no to something else and ask yourself, what is that that you're saying no to? I think you should repeat that because this is the most important sentence in this entire episode. When you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And what is that? <laughs> So the first way of planning your week was about time blocking. The second way is an agile way that we often use in software development. And basically you create a board, it can be a physical board with post-its on the wall or you can use an online tool. And on this board you create, let's say, five columns. And the first one can be your wish list. The second one you name to do this week. The third one you name currently working on, and then the fourth one you call for review, and the fifth done. During the week, to the wish list, you add things and tasks that need to be done, but you don't start doing them yet. You just put them on the wish list. And then you have one time a week, maybe at the end, very end of the week, or at the very beginning of each week, you have a planning meeting. And here you choose tasks from the wish list that are the most urgent and most important for your business right now. Since your business changes all the time, this way you can address the changes every week. And then you place those tasks that you want to address in the to-do column, the second column that we said to do this week. And you only place so many tasks that you know that you and your team has capacity for in one week without burnouts, of course. So then you have planned this week 
And then when we start after the planning meeting, you just start working on these tasks that you've chosen. You can then, every time you start working on a task, you can put them in the third column, currently working on. And this is great if you're a team, because then you know what the other members are doing at the same time. And again, if you have the, a team, then you use the fourth column. You put things tasking for review. So then you can have another member, maybe someone with that responsibility to check that task and then name it done and put it in the fifth column. So if you don't have a team, you don't actually need this for review. And the advantage of this agile way is that you work on what's most important at the moment since your business changed all the time. You also know that this task will be done by the end of the week because if you only plan so many tasks that you know you have capacity for that week. And then when the week is over, you just start over again with the planning for the next week. And when a task shows up during the week, you just put them on the wish list. And then you can decide later on in that meeting if you want to tackle them the following week. And now let's talk about planning your day. First, you have to check with yourself. What personality type are you? Are you a starter? Are you a doer? What type of person are you? And for example, myself, I'm a really quick start and I like to, to work on things, get them done. I know exactly what I need to do. I just fire at it and then do, 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 and then it's done. If you are not this type of person, what tools do you need? What do you need to do in order so you can be productive? And before you start your day, you have to think about your intention. What is your intention for the day? This is more like a visualization. When you wake up, you're in the bathroom, you're getting ready, and you're like, okay, what is my intention for today? Today I want to be productive. Today I want to be efficient. Today I want to get things done, be happy, stay positive. All those things, because what, then when you're sitting down at your desk, your brain and yourself, you know exactly how you need to show up for your business and what you need to do. By setting your intention, it's... It prepares you for how you show up. What is the most creative, effective, efficient, productive version of you? Well, paint that picture. And yes, that's how you're going to show up for that day and the next day and the day after. And no, it's nothing you were born with. And no, it doesn't come naturally. This is something you have to teach yourself. This is something you have to make into a habit. But give yourself a week. Try it out and see the outcome of it. And do try this because it can have a huge impact. It did on us and it can have a huge impact on how you show up and your productivity as well. And then you have to look again, look at yourself. Uh, I'm talking about me. I'm, since I'm a, I'm a doer, I'm a quick start. I need to see and check with myself when I have the most energy during the day. My energy is in the morning. I am not an evening person. When it's 10, 11, I'm ready to go to bed. But some people, that's when they have the most energy. So you have to do a self-assessment. When do you have the most energy? When are your all your cylinders? When are they running full speed? When are you at your top, at your best? That's when you need to work on your most important things. And also, are you an introvert or an extrovert? You need to prepare. Some have to go to events. And if you're an introvert, you know that this is going to suck so much energy out of you. You need to unwind after. You need to mentally prepare before. I traveled so much last year. And of course, it does take time to get back on both on an energy level, but then also on focus and to implement things that you need to get done. It's not just go to events and talk to people and go sourcing and go, you know, meet everybody. It's about, in the end, it's about implementing. And that's when you want to have the most energy. And that's when you want to prepare yourself for when it's implementation time. So do take... So, uh, do, do make a self-assessment. When do you have more, most energy? Are you an introvert or an extrovert? What suits you? What does not suit you? Do make a little time study on yourself. Pick a day or a week and check. How much time am I, am I uh, needing for certain tasks? When do I have most energy? When can, I, can my brain not even write a, a proper sentence? All this you need to track and then act accordingly. 
And then when you get down to the actual tasks for the day, there are several ways to address this as well. And one way is to start with the big tasks that you have first. And one way is just to start with the tasks that actually drive your business forward. And in many cases, you get a clue because these are the things that you procrastinate. You know which tasks they are, but they, they are the ones that you need to address. They are the big ones. In a way, we don't work in this way, but three of our recent one-on-one -on -one coaching clients have discussed this with us. They like to start the day off with a small win, because obviously some like to do things that gives a fast result in order to have a quick win and continue the day on a positive way. You're on a roll, so to speak, for the day. So that's the thing that you can do as well. Uh, let's give you some example from two of our clients. Uh, one starts off their day with social media posting. 30 minutes every morning, uh, posts, comments, follows, does the entire social media thing. 30 minutes every day. She knows this. She's on it. It's super focused. When the 30 minutes are done, she's off it. And another client, he exercises for 45 minutes every morning. And when the 45 minutes are done, he continues with his planner. So he checks his planner and then that's his, uh, that's his one hour preparing in the morning before the family wakes up. I mean, that's fantastic. Starts the day with exercise and with, uh, with energy. Something that we started working with one year ago is batching theme batching. And for you as designers and as brand founders, you can batch tasks in your design period, for example, or when you have fit sessions and comment, you need to comment the samples. You can accumulate all the samples and then instead of fitting and commenting the samples one by one when they arrive, maybe you wait the week till you have all the samples and then you do a fit session and a commenting, commenting session on everything. You will be much more productive. You will have have, you will be able at the same time to check the garments against each other to see what's good, what's bad, just to make sure that you're being consistent with your comments and with the implementations that you're going to do for those samples. One thing I want you to be careful with when you work on your planning, that's deadlines. There are obvious cases when you know a supplier needs a certain, certain thing by a certain date, but when you decide the deadlines yourself, in most cases, deadlines tend to be self-fulfilling prophecies. If you set a certain date, then it usually stretches until that date. It's not done before that. So if you can, challenge yourself, put the deadlines as early as you can and have an attitude of beat the plan. When you look at daily planning, you have to be aware of time thieves. And typically time thieves, there are meetings, phone calls, and again, meeting. Does everyone have to be in that meeting? A stand-up meeting will give a sense of urgency that you want, don't want to stand up for so long time and then you continue with your next thing. And social media, that's another time thief. Beware of how much time you spend. And you can easily check this on your phone and see how much time you have spent on it. And it can be a wake-up call for you. We have just read studies that show that notification, those are the biggest time stealers. So turn off your notifications. Social media, texting, email, push notification, and do this everywhere on your phone and on your computer. And so often when we have coaching calls, we hear on their computer, bing, bing, bing. And of course, this is not done with intention, but it's inevitable that they are going to check what, what the bling was about. And it takes away the focus. And a final tip here when it comes to planning is to always have your calendar with you, no matter if it's a physical calendar or if it's a phone. And as soon as a task or a, an event sh shows up, put it in your calendar because that way you know you will not forget it. It's there in your calendar. And then you can make it in a, into a habit to check your calendar. So you check it, for example, every Sunday evening before the week starts and every evening before your afternoon before the following day starts. You know what's going to happen. You'll be prepared. And every day when you're starting, you know exactly what you need to attack instead of sitting down in front of the computer and be like, oh, what should I do now? I mean, that's such a time stealer. 
And that was it for this episode. It's packed with actionable tips. Hope you guys can implement some of them to give you a much more productive 2020. And by the way, we have two spots open for January for one-on-one coaching. So just let us know, go to the website or DM us or yeah, uh, let's have a discussion if you uh, need any sessions with us. And you can also go and download the free planning checklist that we have created specifically for this episode. So you can use it and start a productive 2020. Go to apparelentrepreneurship.com forward slash planning to download it for free. Thank you so much for taking your time to listen. And as always, we love when you take pictures and tag us and share this on your social media because then more people can can listen to the podcast and it can help more apparel entrepreneurs as yourself. So have a good day. Take care and speak to you next week. Bye.